Okay, guys, so let's talk about section uh, 6.3, part 3, geometric random variables. Uh, fortunately, if you are okay with uh, binomial random variables, then geometric is not much different. Uh, one slight difference, but uh, checking the conditions, all that kind of stuff should feel familiar to you. Um, so I'll go right into that so I don't waste your time here. Um, so in binomial, for binomial random variables, we have something called the binomial setting, which has specific conditions, the bins conditions. And for a geometric random variable, we have a geometric setting, which uh, has a different acronym, uh, not bins, but bits. So basically everything is the same, except the only difference with a geometric random variable is that we're not counting a number of trials. Uh, that are successes out of a total number of trials, but we're counting uh, the number of trials until we reach the first success. So that's what this is. So I'm not, uh, you know, saying there's five successes out of 30. I'm saying how many trials do I have to have until I have my first success? So there's only one success. Uh, that's really the only difference. You still need binary. You still need success and failure. You still need trials must be independent. Um, all those kind of things, uh, you still need the probability of success on each trial to be the same. So no real difference there. It's just that now you're counting number of trials until first success. All right. So uh, it says in a geometric setting, if we define the random variable y to be the number of trials needed to get the first success, then y is a geometric random variable. And so there's a definition box there. I mean, I can't really restate that again. I think I said that three times already. So uh, let's just look at example one. Determine whether each of the following scenarios describes a geometric setting. If so, define an appropriate geometric random variable. Uh, so for this one, let's start out with uh, B for bits. Uh, shuffle a standard deck of playing cards well, then turn over one card at a time from the top of the deck until you get an ace. So um, I would say success here could be uh, get an ace. And failure would be any other card. OK, or not an ace. All right. Uh, independence. Uh, there's no replacement, so we turn over turn over one card at a time from the top of the deck until you get an ace. So every time the probability of success of getting an ace changes, and so we don't have uh, the independence condition met. So we can just say uh, since there is no replacement. Uh, the trials are independent. Okay. Uh, all right, and then uh, so that fails. So this is not a geometric setting. Okay. So this is not a geometric setting. Since the bit, bits failed on the I independence, okay, and then uh, how about the next one? Lawrence is learning to shoot a bow and arrow on any shot. He has about ten percent chance of hitting the bull's eye. Lawrence's instructor makes him keep shooting until he gets a bull's eye. So until I get a bull's eye, so count how many shots I have until I have my first success, which is a bull's eye. Sounds like a, a geometric random variable. So um, let's say B. For binary uh, success, we would call a bullseye. And failure, we would call uh, not a bullseye. OK. Independence, uh, that's kind of tricky, I think. If you think about that carefully, is my one shot independent from my other shot? So 
Uh, I think that's kind of tricky here, but because maybe you're getting better as you're shooting, your eye is getting in or something like that, so you're actually your chance of uh, shooting a bullseye might be improving due to your previous shots. So this kind of tricky. Uh, I think the textbook goes here for it is independent. My one shot doesn't affect my other shot, but um, that's kind of tricky. I think so. Let's just let's just go with what the textbook said. Uh, uh, each shot is roughly independent. Okay. I think you could probably make an argument for the opposite. But in any case, uh, and then T, trials until success, yeah. We count the number of trials until a bullseye. Okay, until a bullseye. And then... Uh, S probability of success. Well, they gave us a number: ten percent chance of hitting the bullseye on any shot. So that kind of hints at the independence thing. This right here kind of forces us to accept independence. Uh, ten percent chance on any shot. So yes, so we have a probability. Of success is 0.1 for each trial, each trial or each shot. Okay, and I think it says then uh, define a random variable. So we have to define this. So we say uh, let y equal. Uh, the number of shots it takes to get a bullseye. Okay, so that's uh, that's our geometric random variable. All right, then uh, we can actually do some calculations. So if we look at this geometric probability formula, if y has the geometric distribution, the probability p of success on each trial, the possible values of y are 1, 2, 3, all the way up to a certain number of trials. Uh, if k is any one of these values, then the probability of that y is equals to k, that the number of trials required until my first success is k trials, uh, is this formula. And that's fairly similar to the binomial random variable, binomial probability formula. Uh, that one was this probability that x equals k was n choose k times p to the k times 1 minus p to the n minus k. All right, so let's look at these two side by side. Uh, let me just point out here too that uh, this is not on the formula sheet. So you need to know this one, but I think if you understand it based on the one that is on the formula sheet, the binomial random variable, you should be okay. So uh, this binomial coefficient right here tells me how many ways I could have k successes and n trials. Well, Geometric is different because I'm saying there's only one way. I, I can only have 23 trials and on the 24th one a success. So there's only one way this can happen. So I don't have to count combinations. So it makes sense that in this uh, geometric probability formula, this is not here. All right? So I'm not counting number of ways. It can only happen one way. And then uh, you can see that these two are closely related to these two down here. Uh, except it's switched around. So there's only one trial which is a success. My first trial is a success. So here we have the number of uh, successes and the probability of success raised to that power for binomial. For geometric, there's only one success 
and we're raising the probability of success to that power. You can kind of think of it like that. Okay, so yeah, that's not too difficult to go with. And then this is the probability of failure, of not having a success, and you're going to have uh, k minus 1. Okay, so if k is 24, I'm going to have 23 trials where I didn't get a success, and my 24th trial is a success. So let's say k was 23, uh, sorry, k was 24, then this would be my 23 trials of failures, and this would be the 24th trial, which is a success. Okay, so I don't think this is really that big of a deal that this is not on the formula sheet. Uh, I think if you understand what this is saying, let me erase this binomial. I think if you understand what this is saying, then memorization is not really that big of a deal. Uh, you're not counting combinations because it can only happen one way, and you're looking for a bunch of failures until you get a success. So I think this is fairly simple to derive or come up with or something from the binomial probability formula which is on the formula sheet. So I don't think this is the end of the world uh, for you necessarily. So in any case, let's move on from that and uh, let's do an example. Okay, And so uh, let's look at this one. It says, uh, as a special promotion for its 20 ounce bottles of soda, a soft drink company printed a message on the inside of each cap, very common practice. Some of the caps said, please try again, while others said, you're a winner. The company advertised the promotion with the slogan, one in six wins a prize. Suppose the company is telling the truth, we just believe them, and that every 20 ounce bottle of soda it fills has a one in six chance. So this is my uh, probability of success, all right, of being a winner. And Alan decides to keep buying 20 ounce one 20 ounce bottle of soda at a time until he gets a winner. All right? So, okay, until I get a winner, that's uh, not a fixed number of trials, that's trials until first success. And I supposedly have the probability of success being the same for each trial, each bottle being a trial. So this feels like a, a geometric random variable. Um, so, it says find the probability that he buys exactly five bottles. Use the formula first and check your answer with the command geomet pdf one six and five. Okay, so let's do the formula first. Let's do the formula first. So this says uh, I don't know why this is messed up here. Sorry, this should be B over here. Uh, any case, uh, let's try the formula first. So the formula is probability that y equals to 5. And uh, that is, looking at the formula up here, k is 5, number of trials until success. That means I have failures, 1 minus this probability of success, which is 1 6. So I have this probability for a failure to the power of all the failures until I get my first success. So uh, k minus 1, so this is our k right here, k minus 1, phi minus 1, okay? And then multiply that by the probability of success. My first success happens on the fifth trial. So again, this should not be too bad for you. This is 5 over 6 to the fourth, four failures, and then success on the fifth trial, right? And if you do this in your calculator, I think you get 0, 0.0... 804, something like that. I just talk about the calculator, so you have to do geomet PDF, should give you that same answer. Geomet PDF, remember, very important, uh, the PDF for binomial and geometric random variables on your calculator uh, gives you the probability of an equality. Okay? So that's what PDF does, the P. So let's look at your calculator. If we go here and do that second distribution we go up and here's geomet pdf and cdf so let's go to pdf enter it says probability of success which is one over six don't round this or do something just enter the fraction and then x value is number of trials until success so in this case it's five and do that and you get 
rounded to the third non-zero decimal, uh, exactly the answer we have there. Okay, so that's uh, Geomet PDF on your calculator for equality. Then uh, the follow-up question is this: find the probability that he buys no more than eight bottles. So no more than eight bottles means eight or less. Okay, so use the formula first and check your answer. Okay, so let's do that again. So this is the question probability that y is less than or equal to eight. And if we use the formula, the formula said, uh, let's look up there again, y equals k, one minus p, so I do one minus probability of success to the power k minus one, k here for us is eight, so eight minus one times probability of success to the first power, okay? <laughs> that is our success. And then if you do this, you get, what, five sixths again to the seven failures times one sixth to the first success. And if you do that on your calculator, uh, basically what you're looking at here is this, 0 0.7674, okay? So remember here we're counting probability of getting success on the first trial, second trial, so on, so on, so on. Uh, and if you do this on your calculator now, remember we're looking at uh, less than or equal, which is an accumulation of probabilities. That's what this stands for, cumulative. So CDF is for less than or equal. So we don't have to do any one minus or anything here because CDF gives us exactly that. If I use Geomet CDF 168, I'm gonna get exactly that answer. So let's just verify that. If you go back here, second distribution, hit the up arrow, Jamet CDF this time, and probability of success still one sixth. But now we're saying eight trials until my first success. Okay, my success occurs on the eighth trial. And if you hit enter there, uh, you get 0.7674, which is what we have. All right. So that's how you do this on your calculator. That's how you do this with the formula. Uh, please do not write, do not write uh, Geomet CDF anywhere. All right, or Geomet PDF. This is just a Texas instrument specific calculator command. We don't want that. So write the formula and then find it on your calculator if you don't want to find it on your calculator one way or another. You can do it by just typing in the formula or doing Jamet CDF or PDF. All right, uh, something for you to know at least. Uh, we don't do the, we haven't been doing this much actually for either binomial or geometric, but we're not really going to make graphs. But you should know that um, for any geometric random variable, the probability of success is highest on the first trial. Uh, once you start multiplying a bunch of probabilities together, you're just decreasing uh, the probability of getting your first success on a number of trials. So actually, any geometric distribution looks like this. The first trial always has the highest success, highest probability of success. Okay? So any case, I'll let you think about that. Uh, graphing these are not really a big part of our class, but think about that a little bit. Uh, since you're multiplying, every time you multiply a fraction, your probability of success overall in over a number of trials is going down. So, something to think about. All right. Any case, uh, and then we talk about, lastly, uh, mean of a geometric random variable. And it says if y is a geometric random variable with probability of success p on each trial, then it's mean or expected value is mu sub y, capital Y, or expected value of y is 1 over p. That is, the expected number of trials required to get the first success is 1 over the probability of success. Right? And uh, the textbook doesn't actually have, again, this is not on the formula sheet, right? not on the formula sheet. So you're going to have to figure out a way of coming up with that one. Remember, uh, for a binomial, it was NP. This is 1 over P. So 
uh, it's quite a bit different. Uh, in any case, we don't talk about standard deviation. It's not really part of our course, okay? But there is the formula uh, in case you were interested. So it's not really part of the course, but there's the formula for standard deviation of a geometric random variable. All right, so uh, let's do a last example and we'll be done. We'll run through the whole process, uh, two probabilities, and then we'll find the mean of the geometric random variable, if it is a geometric random variable. So suppose you roll a pair of fair six-sided dice, a pair of fair six-sided dice. Very, All three of those are important. Until you get doubles, let T be the number of rolls it takes. Okay. So the question, there's many things going on here. A pair, all right, so two die at the same time. They're fair. So that means the probability of any one outcome for a fair die is one-sixth. And a pair, there's two of them, until I get doubles. Now, doubles. How can doubles happen? So we have to do the probability of success on any one trial. Uh, and a, a trial involves two die rolls, okay? So one, the roll one die and then you roll another one. So that's one trial. So that's a bit more complicated. So um, we'll think about that. But let's let's check bits first. Let's check bits. So we'll do B, uh, binary. So what would be a success? Success here would be roll doubles. Okay, and failure would be uh, you don't roll, do roll doubles, okay? So don't roll doubles, all right? And then uh, independence, independence. Well, we know classically die rolls, if they're fair and all that kind of stuff, uh, we, we had that saying, a coin has no memory, definitely die have no memory either. So um, we know that die rolls are independent. So each roll of uh, a die is independent. Okay. Uh, then T. Yes, we're counting until you get doubles. So uh, we count number of rolls until doubles. So that definitely matches uh, geometric random variable. And then S, probability of success. Now we have to think about this one a little bit. So we're thinking what's the probability of getting, let's say, a 1 on the first roll, which is 1, 6, if it's a fair die. And uh, let me rewrite that. We're, we're basically doing this. Uh, probability of getting a 1 on the first roll and a 1 on the second roll. All right? Or any number, actually, as long as they both match. And so we're saying, what's the probability of getting a 1 on the first roll? Well, we're saying that these are independent, so it's the probability of getting a 1 and the probability of getting a 1, because this is an independent process. And this is 1 6 times 1 6, because of independence. All right? So this is 1 over 36. That's the one way it could happen. Or I could get probability of 2 and 2, and that's actually the same, exactly the same process, 1 over 36. So it's this one or this one, dot, dot, dot. So I basically go all the way until I say what's the probability of getting a 6 and a 6. And that's also 1 six, uh, one thirty-six. But if you add them up, there are overall total 6 of these. right? So uh, probability of success here is 1 over 36 plus 1 over 36 uh, six times, okay? Which is 6 over 36, which takes us back to 1 over 6, okay? So uh, that seems like it was a waste of time, but 
you know, you have to think through this carefully and come up with your probability of success. So all that gave me the probability of success. All right. So there it is. I definitely have a geometric random variable here. And so we can go ahead and calculate this. So T, they told us T, so we're saying they defined here for us uh, T is the number of tr rolls it takes to get a double. Okay? So T was defined, so we don't have to define T. And now we're just doing it, calculating probability. What's probability that T is 3? And that is using our formula. Uh, 1 minus the probability of success to the power 3 minus 1 times the probability of success to the power 1. That's our first success. And if you do this, you get uh, 5 sixth to the second times 1 sixth to the first. And if you do that, you end up with 0 0.1157. Again, you can do that on your calculator. This would be, remember, uh, this would be a binome PDF situation. Okay, I don't want to write that. You shouldn't be writing that. But this would be a binome PDF situation. So you'd be doing uh, this one right here. And still the same probability of success, interestingly. Um, but here you're doing three, okay? And if you do that, you get the number we got, all right? And then it says, interpret the result in context. Ah, so interpreting, writing sentences, statistics, important. So uh, there is about a 12% chance, if you just make this a whole percent, 12% chance that you will roll a set of doubles on the third roll. All right. All right. Happiness. Yay. All right. Uh, letter C. In the game of Monopoly, whoa, now we have a different thing. No, we don't, because it's uh, rolling to die. Eh, same thing. In the game of Monopoly, a player can get out of jail free by rolling doubles within three turns. Find probability that this happens. Within three turns. Okay, within three turns. So that is less than or equal to three. So now we're asking this question. T less than or equal to three. All right. So you should think that this should be a bigger answer than this one. So you should be thinking this way already. If I'm doing this and I'm getting that number, then this should be bigger because I'm adding up three probabilities. Okay, I'm adding up three probabilities. So it should be in the back of your head. So we're, we're basically asking this question. What's probability that t is 1 uh, or the probability that t is 2 or probability that t is 3. So we're adding up three of them. In any case, if you just use the formula, this gives you the still a very simple way to find the answer. Uh, you're doing uh, three things that you're adding up, actually. So if you're filling in the formula for this, uh, this is a bit annoying. So you're going to do uh, 5, 6 for your first trial that would be no failures and then success on the first trial okay and or you would have uh, this happen uh, one failure and one success Ooh, not five six forgive me this should be one six and then the last one would be the one we had at top which is five six to the two one six to the one okay that's basically what you're doing. Now, you know, you should be able to write this down, but on your calculator, you're just going to do Geomet CDF. This is a CDF situation, not PDF, and write that down. So uh, if you go here, you're doing Geomet CDF, same probability of success, uh, but now we're just doing three or less. Remember, this is less than or equal to three. And if you do that, you get point. Four two one three about so zero point 
four, two, one, three. Okay, so you can see yeah, your intuition uh, pays off. That's much higher because you're adding up three. And we said that the probability of success on the first trial is always the highest. So, yeah, interesting. All right, so uh, lastly, find the mean and interpret it in context. Okay, so uh, we said mu of t is 1 over p, which is 1 over 1 over 6, uh, which if you do this, a little bit of pre-algebra magic, you get 6 rolls. Okay. So it says, what does this mean? The mean of this geometric random variable is six rolls. Okay, so this says, uh, on average, you will need to roll the dice uh, six times in order to get a set of doubles. All right. So that's that. Okay. Uh, I hope that little video there helps you guys and that um, you will be fully happy and prepared for your test. Okay. Thanks, guys.